Hi YouTube, Engineer Boy 100. Today's video is a really, really quick 996 turbo video and it's a kind of a fall through the cracks type of video that a lot, a lot of people debated when we discussed turbos, turbo replacement, turbo failures, um, and of course, replacement of this check valve. This is the oil feed check valve to the turbos on the 996. And today, we're gonna discuss servicing them the benefits, the technique, and why and when you might wanna do it. So let's get right into it. All right, so um, these little check valves, they're about $100 to $200 a piece, depending on where you get them from. And I picked up a couple of extra ones so I could do this video for you guys today. Now, here's my school of thought. I think that it's possible, and I don't have any data to protect to, to support this, but I do think it's possible to keep these valves cleared so that the oil that flows through them to cool and lubricate the bearings in the turbos, they could be serviced in a way that would help prevent undetectable turbo failure, okay? What, what do I mean? Well, in taking these apart, I found out they were pretty dirty. These were used, I got these off of eBay, popped them open, took a look. All right, it has a little screen in it, which I will show you. Um, it has a little check valve in it, okay? And it has a little chamber that can collect gummy oil um, and debris. So let's open them up and take a look. Now this one I've already cleaned. This is number one. You can see a little, oh, number one on it. See number one on there. Uh, this one is dirty, I, have, I, I cracked it because these are really, really tight. They have some kind of a sealer in the threads, it's super tight. I will not be using that sealer. I will be using, um, I will be using a gray gasket sealer in the threads. Okay, I will not be using the sealer that they use. Um, but it's really hard. I did, um, I'm gonna say it was akin to taking a bolt off of a tire, a lugging off a tire. It was about 100 foot pounds. It was, these are tight. These are tight. And the size of these nuts on them is 22 millimeter or seven eighths. But 22 millimeters is much more accurate. Um, seven eighths is a little off because it's a conversion, but these are 22 millimeter and I really strongly suggest you use the 22 millimeter because um, this inner nut, it has the corners around it. So if your, your wrench is cheap and it's off a little bit, you're gonna strip it, all right? So just use a good quality 22 millimeter um, for the inside and 22 millimeter for the outside to open. Here we go. Finally, huh? open the valve. Now, once you open the valve, inside you can see the actual check valve. See if you can see that. It's a little ball check valve. It is spring loaded, okay? You wanna make sure that entire area around the bottom right there is clean just like this one. I cleaned this one up already and I'm trying to move it around a bit so you can see in there. So yeah, this is a cleaned one. Um, also, on the other side, there is, see if I can get this to focus. Here we go, focus. There's a screen, okay? And I'm gonna take the screen out right now. Um, it's pretty easy, just turn it over, get something that's not too sharp. I'm gonna use this little screwdriver, and you just, you just push it out, okay? Push out the screen, and here it is. This is what it looks like, all right? It can get gummed up. Clean it, be careful, don't damage it. I'm, I'm sure you're not gonna find a replacement for these. All right, so be very careful with this little screen. All right, and it goes in, the round nose down. Okay, that's how it goes in, just like, just like that. That's how it installs. But clean the screen. So yeah, the process for cleaning this, clean the chamber, clean your screen. Then you're gonna clean these threads out because there's a bunch of sealer in them, okay? And there's an O-ring, for, for, for external sealing, there's an O-ring right here. This is the old one. Whoever did this, this one originally, I think this is from the dealer, they didn't do it right. They crushed and cut up the O-ring. See, they didn't do it right. Let me get this thing. There we go. They destroyed the O-ring, cut it, crunched it because they didn't pay attention when they were closing down uh, this, the, this chamber. You just pay a little bit of attention. Go nice and slow, lubricate it maybe, jiggle it around, make sure, you know, turn it back and forth, make sure that the, uh, the O-ring is clearing the lip and then tighten it down, okay? So that's one thing. You wanna replace that O-ring, what size is it? 
Okay, all rings are sized by the cross-sectional area and the inside diameter. So the cross-sectional area of this O-ring is 1.6 millimeter and the inside diameter is 16.1 millimeter. Okay, you can get these anywhere. This is just oil, so it doesn't need to be Viton or anything. It doesn't come in contact with Pendleton. Mine are Viton just because I have a bunch of them around, but it doesn't have to be. But that's the size. I'll put up a card for that uh, so you can look it up if you want to buy these in advance. If you want to service your um, if you want to service your check files. Now let's take this one apart. This one's still dirty. This one is going to make a mess, I think, because I have not cleaned it. Um, see, it has the original green O-ring on it still. Open it up. Yeah, it's dirty. So there we go. Now uh, you can see inside of it. See if I can get that to focus. Uh huh. See, this one's dirty. I would clean that entire chamber out. Okay, that's one thing. Uh, the screen, it has a little bit of debris in it. I can see it. Okay, so I would take this out like so. And if it, yeah, if it's not stuck. And I would clean the little bits of burnt oil or whatever that get clogged in the in the screen. Let's see if I can get that. To, there you go. It's not too bad, but it's not it's not perfect, and it is dirty. So I would clean this out. All right, change the O-ring, and then check the check valve. Well, how do you check a check valve? Well, you know, and on a, on a side note, a close cousin to this topic, this topic of, of maintaining your check valve is the, the, the question I, I've asked before of, well, what kind of gas mileage is your vehicle getting? And the response I got from a few people was, well, if you have to worry about the gas mileage, then you can't afford to drive a car, which is not the best response because the main reason for checking your gas mileage is not to see whether or not you can afford the gas, is to check a bunch of different things that could possibly be wrong with the engine. You know, there's, there, it's a diagnostic first step. You know, if, you're, if your gas mileage starts going down, it could be an indication of a lot of things. It could be an indication that you're losing air in a tire. It could be an indication that you have um, a, a problem with your alignment. Okay, you could have a clogged air filter. You know, you could have a fuel injector that's malfunctioned. Okay, there's a lot of different things that contribute to a change or poor gas mileage that have nothing to do with, oh, I have money and I can afford gas, so I'm not going to check my gas mileage. That's just, well, I'm not going to say what it is. My point here is to try and point out different ways that we can maintain our cars to avoid problems, be, being proactive instead of just waiting till something fails, understanding how the machines work, and maintaining and addressing issues before they occur so we enjoy them. Okay, so back to the valve. The check valve flows oil this way, okay, and it shall not be flowing anything this way. So use a, non, use a compressible fluid, a compressible fluid to check it. What's that? Air. Just put your mouth on here and blow through it. So I'll do that right now. Okay, you can blow through that way, you turn it around. Once it's clean, clean it first, and then you should get nothing going the other way. And I don't, so this one is good to go. Once you clean these things up, put them back together, I think they can help prevent oil starvation from the bearings in the turbo and thus preventing turbo failure because people, what are the symptoms? They ask me, what would be the symptoms that I have a, you know, a f you're not gonna get any symptoms. That's the thing. It's gonna have a little bit of oil coming through it if it's starting to get clogged, for a while anyway, until it gets completely clogged and then it fails, and then the per turbo's getting no oil. Then the bearings go out, then your turbo blows up, and you're like, well, what were the symptoms? The symptoms were, you were indifferent and didn't wanna maintain your, didn't wanna do maintenance. So when do you do maintenance on these? My recommendation? whenever you change the spark plugs. Why? Because it's sitting right there. All you do is take the line off, unscrew, you know, get your uh, 22 millimeter wrench, unscrew it, take it out, take it apart, clean it, put it back, done. Takes the extra five minutes. So that's it for this um, video. I just wanted to point out how you could possibly prevent a turbo failure 
by doing extremely simple maintenance on your turbo oil feed check valve. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.